So like I said, we don't want to spend too much time on PowerPoint. We're going to dive right into the live demo. Um, for the de demonstration, we're going to open up, kind of show you some of the uh, elements of Power, of Power Pivot in Microsoft, um, show you some different examples that we've kind of built out for the demo, an income statement, maybe looking at how to blend data from multiple sources, finance and sales as an example, different modules within J.D. Edwards. We'll kind of peel the end a little bit about the, uh, the underlying data sources that we've pulled in for the demo. We'll build a new ad hoc report. In this case, we'll do an open purchase order report. And we'll also show you uh, the J.D. Edwards table inquiry uh, utility that we've built to, uh, to help customers mine the J.D. Edwards uh, data model. And then we'll come back to, to PowerPoint and finish up um, with questions at the end. Um, so what we're looking at here is a, is a spreadsheet. I've already had it open. We're going to go ahead and build one new so you kind of see how we start from a, a blank canvas and start from scratch. But um, you'll notice on the left here, you know, we've got this data. It's a, it's a P&L, you know, the normal breakdown of a P&L with revenue, cost, gross profit, net income. We've got period, uh, budget, uh, actual budget and variance amounts, year-to-date actual budget variance. Now, We've got this actually running for 2005, period 6. If I go ahead and click on period 9 here, it's now going to recalculate those values for period 9 instead of period 6. If I wanted to look at this for a specific business segment, maybe just medical electronics, I can click on medical electronics and we'll see just medical electronics result or maybe imaging. So these slicers are one of the differences and, and we'll show you um, from the Power Pivot window here in a second. So what if I wanted to um, add a breakdown here by line of business? Let me go ahead and remove that for a second. If I go ahead and click somewhere here on this report, it's going to open up on the right-hand side of the screen a Power Pivot window. You'll notice here on the right, this is now a Power Pivot um, kind of a field list uh, menu box. Up on the top here in this section are the different data sources that we've already pulled into this. We'll, we'll Peel the onion on that in a little bit. Uh, these are coming from finance, so things that you might be familiar with, account, uh, company, business unit, subledger, subsidiary, object account, things like that. We've also pulled in a few different business unit cat codes. We've called one line of business, another one business segment. Uh, we also have some row flags, and we can kind of get into more details about that. One of the techniques we use to build financial reports, and uh, we actually had been managing that for the sake of the demo in a spreadsheet. If you're managing within JDO, it's great. If you're not, then um, some, some new things that we can share with you at some point. And then here we're pulling some sales data as well. So this P&L, um, again, is just pulling all based on the financials. If I wanted to go and see a slicer, uh, well, before I dive into that, down below here is the traditional power or the traditional pivot table would have a report filter, column labels, row labels, and the values. With Power Pivot, you kind of get these new concept of slicers. The slicers are these kind of automatic filters that you just click and it will automatically filter the content for you. If I want to add a new one, let's say on line of business, I could grab line of business and just drag it right into my vertical slicers. And you'll notice here on the right, we're now going to get an option to slice line of business. So if we want to take a look at that P&L purely by, let's say, pharmaceutical, I can click on pharmaceutical and it'll update the content on the right. Okay. What if I wanted to see maybe just uh, corporate administration as an example? Right. So by clicking on these, we can kind of see that content update. If I want to remove those filters, just clicking on that, and it'll bring me back to the full uh, consolidated uh, PL as well. Okay. So if I go ahead and uh, let's say I wanted to get a different flavor, you'll notice this P&L is breaking down by uh, object account as the row details. What if I wanted my line of business to be the row details? I'm going to go ahead and hold control and just copy this tab down here in my spreadsheet. I'm going to take this income statement, call this line of business. And you'll notice here I've got my different row labels for my row flags and this object account. I'm going to go ahead and just remove the object account from my list. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my line of business and drag that down to the row labels. So now what we're looking at is, in essence, that same P&L, but instead of seeing within each of these categories 
uh, rows being object account, we're now seeing them by line of business. Okay. We could grab any of the different dimensions that are defined above and drag them into these different row or column labels as well, or even additional slices. We'll get into more of those as we go along. So the next thing we want to do is what if we want to add a calculation, maybe a variance percent calc. So on the fly here, um, you have some, some functionality. In this calculations dropdown, this is where we've defined some of those time-based measures that are typically used in financial type reporting, like period, actual amount, budget amount, variance, quarter to date, year to date. So these would be those, those calculated objects that are all based on when we select these different period and year, it'll go ahead and calculate those for us properly based on that period that we've, we've run it through. So if I wanted to add a new calculation, if I just right click on this folder, it could be any folder, it doesn't have to be the calculations folder that we've, we've designated, there'll be an option here to add new measure. And you can choose again which table you're putting that in. I'm going to call this variance percent. I'm going to go down here to my formula, and I can click on my formula editor and pull up the variety of formula options, kind of like what you have in Excel. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pull in my year-to-date variance amount, and I'm going to divide that by my year-to-date budget amount. Okay, choose OK. So you're going to create that, and you'll see a new object be identified here in my list. It'll also automatically drop it into my values at the bottom as well. Okay, you'll notice here there's a variance percent there, dropped it in my table. And at this point, if I want to just copy some of the formatting from one of the other columns, I could do that. Just highlight the whole column, format it as a percent, maybe with one decimal place. Okay. So that was, in essence, just we just copied a tab. Again, all the power, the, the power pivot uh, tables um, are accessible. 